In the first episode of this series, On the Good Life, I reminisced about drinking a $7,600 bottle of wine, which triggered a whole series of thoughts in my mind. We looked at how human nature seeks out and enjoys what is good. The pursuit of the good life is the summary of what the human experience is all about. This hunger, thirst, a quest uh, for what is good is hardwired into us by God. Often we seek this fulfillment by trying to get more of the, of the, of the American dream. You know, the American dream is uh, the default mode most of us fall into when we try to secure the good life. You know, as, as Blaise Pascal, the French philosopher and scientist put it, uh, there is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each man, and most of us go through the, our entire life trying to fill that vacuum with all kinds of good stuff. More leisure, more comfort, uh, more money, and whatever uh, we can buy on Amazon. All those things are good and fine and have their place in life, but our gut level hunger is for security, purpose, joy, meaning, hope, love, fulfillment. However, as we saw in the last episode, even these are not truly met by more of the American dream. So what does that good life look like? That's what we're going to discover here today. My name is Pierre Asti. I'm a sommelier and the founder of Asti Wine Consultants. As we talk about the good life today, uh, if it resonates with you, I'd appreciate you letting me know in the comments below or subscribe to the, the, the actually the subscription is free. Oh, and also ring the little bell. Um, if it was helpful, also share this with a friend. Now, so as I mentioned in the last episode, in the good book, there's this guy named John who, who tells us a variety of stories about Jesus. In one of his stories, he tells about what happened late one afternoon. Jesus miraculously fed over 5,000 people. The crowd was clamoring and as night fell, he got into the boat with his posse and sailed to the other side of the lake. Now, the next day, uh, the crowd tracked him down because they were hungry and they believed he'd perform another miracle. <laughs> you know, like, more food, please. Now, John tells us that Jesus said to them, you're looking for me not because you saw my miracles, but because you ate your fill of bread. Now, he went on to say, you're looking for some food that doesn't last, but get the food that I freely give that endures. He was able to see through their question to their true motivation. Actually, most of us are not interested in long-term stuff as much as we want to have our, our bellies full and filled once again to satisfy our hungers. He recognized and said to the crowd that he knew they were, weren't seeing beyond the sign, the miracle. They were not seeing the purpose of the miracle to confirm to them who he truly is. Jesus tells it like it is. He says to the crowd, let's be honest here. You're not really here for me. You're here to get more of what you want. He's pointing out the human propensity for us to, to try to use him as a means to an end. See, that's the whole key to the, the whole story. He recognizes our propensity to try to use him as a means to the end. <laughs> of course, thankfully, that was the problem back then for those people. We never do that today. We never see people nowadays who try to use Jesus as a means to the end. Have you? Politics, broken relationships, getting out of a bad situation, health or sick family, breaking free of an addiction, eliminating or minimizing a painful situation. You know, I've been there. We want a cosmic vending machine. Even though there's a legitimate appetite, we have a tendency to escalate it to a, a point where we think it's the only area that he can bring satisfaction. 
You know, in the vineyard, frequently, you don't necessarily address the short-term problem, especially when you see there's a better long-term solution. Same thing goes with our kids. Hopefully, you've learned you don't give them what they want as much as you give them what they need. If you haven't learned that, know this for certain, with relative certainty that they will have long-term problems. Sometimes we need to be redirected or have a, a course correction so that we can focus on something deeper, more stable, more fulfilling. Yeah, you know, Jesus brings wholeness and restoration, but if the inner motiv motivation of our heart is to use Him as a means to an end, that's where we go wrong. Don't work for the food that perishes. You're chasing after more bread. You're hungry. But even if I feed you now, it doesn't solve the problem. You could accumulate a whole mountain of bread, but bad weather with mold and mildew, it just won't last. We've got appetites that pull us and guide us towards the short-term appetite, but ultimately it will perish. Money, chasing affirmation through success at work, being subscribed to or, or liked on social media, pursuing short-term relationships, being uh, accepted by our kids or, uh, or others, holding or moving stocks that can be lost when the market takes a hit. Again, it's not wrong to desire financial security or enriching relationships, but when we treat those things like uh, they're an ultimate thing and construct our lives around the pursuit of that appetite, then life gets out of whack and we can lose ourselves pretty easily. Feast on that which brings greatest satisfaction over the long term, eternally. You know, going back to the good book in John, he talked about how Jesus would give a bread that wouldn't perish and that would endure to eternal life. This whole eternal life thing is a little bit like pearly gates, oh, way in the future and angels flying around playing harps. You know, however, if you slow down a little bit, we realize that he's talking about this right here, right now. There's this guy, Dallas Willard, who's a professor of psychology at the University of Cal Southern California, uh, who clarifies this whole eternal life thing. It went something like this. Jesus came among us to show and teach uh, the life for which we were made. He came very gently, opened access to the governance of God with him, and set afoot a conspiracy of freedom and truth among human beings. You know, I thought it was pretty cool, you know, the, the, the way he said he came very gently. You know, not like some of the people who we see on TV and on the news and online, ranting and raving and, and demeaning others. Jesus doesn't hit us over the head and shame you. He opens the door gently and says, take a look at my kind of life. It'll be better for you. I think that phrase, a conspiracy of freedom and truth is kind of cool also. I like the idea Will, Willard is communicating, a plan for something better than being ruled by our short-term appetites and to experience all of life in harmony with the, the good order that God has established. You know, Willard went on to say, he remains among us that by relying on his word and presence, we regenerate the little realms of our lives, you know, that which is under our responsibility. You know, our, our money, time, and body, uh, and our relationships. Uh, we're to regenerate all of our lives into that infinite rule of God. In the last episode, I talked a little bit about this guy, Ben. Everything I just explained about learning to live all of life in alignment with God, Jesus and its teaching was what Ben increasingly discovered over the past 15 years in his particular journey. You know, around 2007, Ben st stepped away from a great job to, to go out on his own. But then in 2008 came the, the market crash. His industry dried up, his finances virtually gone. During this time, he also suffered some health setbacks that knocked him off his, his feet for a couple of months. Professional disaster, market crashed, financially blown up, health spiraling downward, Ben experienced what Jesus had said about 
the, the reality of this life. The bread that we so often pursue, gone, perished. As Ben looked back at, at this time, he now sees how God was working in the midst of that great difficulty and that God was reordering the loves of his heart and training Ben to not seek the bread that perishes, to not just chase after more money so that he could ride out this kind of difficult period. Ben realized there was something vastly more important that God wanted to do in his life. He superseded his hunger to climb the ladder at work. God's good plan was bigger and better than ever increasing financial success. God wanted to bring Ben's life even more into alignment with Jesus rather than having Ben live a, a decently moral life with Jesus sort of on the sideline while he pursued the American dream. As Ben said, God cared more about my soul than my career. Ben eventually came face to face with the implications of Jesus' claim and he painfully had the good life redefined by Jesus. That journey was tough, disorienting, and painful at times, but as Ben says, it was worth it. Going back to the good book and what John had to say about Jesus, Jesus said to the crowd who wanted more bread, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. You know, a loaf of bread might satisfy their hunger for a few hours, but they'll be hungry again. Jesus is self-identifying as the bread of life that will meet their deepest needs and satisfy their deepest longings forever. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? So here's the invitation to the good life. It's not health, wealth, and more of the American dream. There is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of each and every person. Are you ready to fill it? forever? If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm sharing this uh, with you because it's the most important life lesson I've ever learned. I'm so thankful to, to drink daily the good wine. No, no, the best wine ever poured. I invite you to join me. Hey Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and please consider hitting subscribe. Also, click here to check out our new online shop. We have a great lineup of wine related items that will help you get the most out of your wine experience. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.